welcome to. So that'll be at the end. So again, my name is Juan Jimenez. Welcome everyone to the Phoenix House presentation and the prevention teams, Claudia, Stephen, and Julian on the alternatives to drug use and creative ways to combat drug use. So we have an array of information that we're gonna bring to you today in ways that we could occupy our minds, um, expand our knowledge, uh, even create new hobbies that are powerful in ways where you keep everyone entertained and including some tips on how to keep the family engaged and starting new traditions if possible. So without further ado, we're gonna introduce our topic. So these are what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna have Stephen that's gonna introduce psychotherapy and health, healthy relationship. We're gonna dig in uh, with Claudia and art therapy, the drawing, painting, poetry, and some photography that we're gonna include in there and how to expand uh, using simple tools that we have on hand, some of our technology tools like our phones. And we're gonna be talking about intellectual coping skills, reading, listening to music, uh, physical hiking, working out. Julian's going to introduce that topic and family group activities that we can introduce and use. Uh, we're also going to talk about some of the resources that we offer and some of the resources that are available in our uh, neighborhoods here in the San Fernando Valley. So again, my name is Juan Jimenez. For those that joined, just joined in, thank you for joining. Um, we're going to introduce this topic today and the alternatives to drug use and ways that you can keep your mind in tip top shape, picking up new hobbies, information. So take it away, Mr. Steven, introducing psychotherapy and healthy relationships. Thank you, Juan. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Steven, uh, prevention specialist here for Phoenix South. So uh, first off, I just want to start off with a little picture. You know, you guys uh, see it's kind of like a flow chart. It starts off with the hands shaking, love, um, it goes off to solving um, like little puzzle pieces, so solving the equation, and then uh, in between that there's therapy, and then discussing, right? And then we see like the two little um, figures kind of hugging each other. One of them's got a happy face on. So definitely, this is kind of like the flow chart when you're when you're talking about um, trying to solve issues, uh, trying to figure things out, like coping skills and things like that. So we're gonna hop into a psychotherapy. Uh, go ahead, Juan. So uh, one in five American adults has a mental health condition. Research has shown that these mental health conditions can be treated effectively, and that's with psychotherapy. Um, it's also known as talk therapy. So it's not necessarily, um, you don't want to put a stigma on it where it's like, oh, you have psychological problems or, you know, you, you have psychiatric problems. No, um, it's talk therapy. So you're talking. Um, right? So talk therapy has helped millions of Americans. Talk therapy can help individuals overcome pain um, from their past and develop coping strategies for the future. So this could be, you know, trauma, um, whether, you know, it's, it's physical, emotional um, issues that have happened in the past. Um, definitely having a, an outside perspective from someone who um, has, you know, been trained to, to kind of find um, and how to, how to basically um, combat, you know, some of these, um, some of these issues um, with, with talk therapy, right? So this could be um, helping them with coping skills, right? Helping them define their goals, uh, clarify who they are and what they want out of life. So these are all things that could easily be done by just um, hopping into talk therapy uh, when someone's having these issues. I know at some point in our lives, we're all gonna struggle with something, um, whether it be you know, a, a friend, a coworker, um, some sort of situation, we're always going to have problems. Um, and I think definitely talk therapy uh, finding those individuals that you can talk to who will give you that perspective um, is such a huge piece to, you know, why sometimes individuals run to substance use, you know, and them not having individuals that they can talk to, you know, and um, not having um, oh, someone help them with coping skills and uh, reaching their goals, clarifying who they are and what they want out of life. These are all things that uh, talk therapy can definitely help out with. 
Um, people in talk therapy explore their moods and behaviors in a safe place. So I know um, at Phoenix House, uh, unfortunately right now we're not, but you know, when everything kind of goes back into allowing us to see clients in the office, we have a safe place for them. We don't meet with them in a cubicle or an office or, or, or um, where there's a, a lot of people. We have several different, um, you know, uh, rooms designated uh, towards, towards each uh, person. So if it's an adolescent, we have a room that's geared, you know, with toys and things like that. If it's more of a, like a teenager, we have, you know, a few things that are, uh, geared towards them. If it's an older adult, then we have a room that's kind of geared towards them, but we have several different options. Definitely creating a safe place when talking about these things um, only makes the experience um, better. Um, and it, it allows the individual to kind of talk uh, to, the ind to the therapist in a sense of what's going on, you know? A mental health provider or mental health professional may provide a fresh perspective on the issue. So maybe, you know, you have this issue that's going on and you really don't know how to solve it because you've already experienced this issue and you've already tried, you know, a million different ways to kind of combat that issue. Definitely a um, mental health professional can definitely help out with that. Uh, they can give people, people a better understanding of their own emotions. So understanding your own emotions, why, you know, you're reacting the way you're reacting when uh, certain things are happening to you. And therapists can also teach communication skills to convey those emotions. Therapy can promote one's self-esteem, relationships, and outlook on life. If we don't have self-esteem, we're never going to be ambitious. We're never going to want to better our situation. And for someone who's struggling with substance use, they're never going to get out of that, right? They're, it's going to be very difficult if their self-esteem uh, and their relationships and outlook on life it's not, it's not where it should be, you know, and it's not always going to be the perfect situation uh, because, you know, life is life, but definitely these are some of the things that can help, you know, and can help you with that breakthrough um, and the help. It also helps with depression, anxiety, obsessions, compulsions, and relationships, you know, relationships is such a huge thing um, because at one way or another, we have them, um, you can go on to the next slide one. We have them at work. We have them at home. We have them, you know, our landlord. We have them at our grocery stores. You know, I know that um, when I used to work at Trader Joe's, you know, back in the days, and we always had the, our regular customers coming in, and we would talk about certain things, you know, and you build those relationships with individuals, even if they are professional, it is still a relationship. So we have, we, we have them. Uh, go off to the next slide, Juan. Thank you. So um, health relationships, right? So this is another little flow chart, another little diagram. Uh, I started it off with trust. You know, trust uh, should be one of the foundations um, when talking about a healthy relationship, right? If you don't have that, that foundation, uh, chances are whatever you're going to build on it, it's going to crumble eventually. And trust is one of the biggest things, you know, whether it's a professional relationship like a coworker, um, whether it's your landlord or, you know, you're a friend, you know, I have a lot of individuals that I can trust in all of these areas. Um, but I don't just give it to anyone, right? Because you can't, because we've all at some point been hurt. So trust is one of the biggest things. Communication, right? Being able to communicate to the individuals is probably um, an, important, an important thing as well. You know, if I can communicate with my coworkers, especially if we, everything we do is in a team setting, then, you know, I'm going to fail at the things that I do. And this could be at home, you know, with your partner. Um, it could be with your friends. It could be with your uh, family members, right? If you don't communicate, you know, the chances are a lot of, there's going to be things that trickle. And then eventually, you know, you have the snowball effect of an eight. Uh, patience and empathy, right? 
sometimes, you know, family members, friends, coworkers, I know sometimes I ask for, for, you know, my family, my coworkers for patients because I might not understand certain things, you know, and I might not be up to date with certain things. And they're very understanding when it comes to that kind of stuff, you know? So definitely having patience and empathy is, is huge. Affection and interest. Um, my coworkers, they're interested in the same things that I am. Why? Because we work at the same place and we're all um, battling to fight substance use, mental health disorders, trying to help out with these things things right my family the same thing we can sit down and do things together go to the same restaurant together eat the same food together uh watch the same movies together uh because we're we're interested in the same things openness and honesty right i expect for everyone that i associate myself with to be open and honest with me when i do things um and they expect the same thing from me right so being honest about certain situations, um, you know, it could, this could even be if someone tells you, hey, can you watch my house? I'm going to be out this weekend. You know, my dog's in the backyard. All you have to do is come and check up on them, um, drop a little food in there for him, please. You know, and then you go into their house and, you know, you help them out with that situation and they feel um, like they can trust you, you know, and, and you're honest with not going into their house and doing all kinds of crazy things, right? Uh, healthy conflict resolution. This is, you know, in a professional setting, it, it's a huge thing. Um, sometimes, you know, friends, families, coworkers, they might have disagreements, something might have happened, um, or there was a misunderstanding. If you're not able to, you know, kind of have a, a conflict resolution, um, then chances are you're not going to be happy where you're at. So being open to that, even uh, with a friend, right, or with the family member or a partner, um, definitely being open to healthy conflict resolution. Respect, right? Always giving somebody their respect um, that they've earned, in a sense. I, I respect all my coworkers. Um, they respect me. I respect my supervisors, my family, my kids. Um, so definitely respect is, is something that, that's involved in a healthy relationship. Um, appreciation. This is something that we all want. We want to feel, we want to be appreciated, right? At some point. Um, I know most of the time when my coworkers uh, tell me something and they have my back, then they're like, I tell them, hey, I appreciate you, you know, because I do appreciate them. And then flexibility, you know, we always, some points we're going to mess up, you know, as individuals, we're human. Um, so definitely being flexible with that and knowing that, hey, um, I messed up. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Um, these are some of the things that can help with healthy relationships. And so moving along, we're going to have Claudia talking about all artistic alternatives. Thank you, Stephen. That was really important what you just touched on. But yeah, artistic alternatives. There's a lot. We're going to discuss some of them uh, moving along in the next slide. So drawing and painting. There are, there are several artistic alternatives that can be utilized to help combat drug use. One of the ones that I will be discussing today covers drawing, painting, journaling, and the act of creating sculptures. It's a commonly known alter alternative known as art therapy. So basically it dates back to the year of the 1950s. And it's a form of therapy that allows people to express their thoughts and feelings via a nonverbal, imaginative and creative way. So technically it allows people to express what they're feeling without actually having to tell somebody how they feel. So if you look at the right, if you look at the left, you'll see an image of, of a painting that I actually created myself. And I painted it during a time where I wasn't really feeling the best way about myself. I was feeling a little under the weather, as they say, and somewhat lost. So I started painting and this was the result. Usually when I paint, I like to come up with a theme or a statement that represents what I was feeling. The light in the painting represents that despite the darkest days, life continues and you'll always find a glimpse of light at the end. I do want to say though that throughout the years I have improved at painting and it's normal to start with scribbles or color splashes on a blank canvas 
as long as it's helping as a positive alternative. And I do also want to comment that this wasn't completed within one day. This was like, oh, I'm feeling a certain type of way. Let me start painting. And actually, like the bottom half where you see the blue and under, that that took me one day. And then the shading and the top with the moon, that took me another day. But what I want to point out is that sometimes it's hard to get your point across and it's hard to express yourself with words. So it's totally acceptable to resort to painting or other methods included in art therapy. Next slide, please. Thank you. So art therapy and your brain. So I'm not just here to tell you guys that art therapy helps you express your feelings, but I'm also here to inform you that art therapy has also been proven successful towards improving our brain health. And if you've been with us in our previous sessions, you know, we always bring up the brain because it's pretty important, right? So it has been reported that art therapy helps with improving memory, concentration, as well as creativeness. It's also been reported that overall art therapy makes you feel better and it makes you feel content or happy. So going back to the painting that I made, you know, when I first started it, I still felt a little lost because I was like, okay, I haven't finished it. And you know, when I finished it, I did feel better because I was able to write that quote for it. I was able to say, okay, well, this is what this means to me. And I, and I was able to feel like happy about completing it. Next slide, please. Okay, so as mentioned, poetry and creative writing is also an effective way to combat substance use. Writing poems or journaling helps in expressing emotions that can be difficult to express. Writing overall helps with promoting self-reflections and does increase overall self-awareness. We do wanna take the time today to read the poem located to the right. So it's called Goodbye Mr. Cocaine and it's by Ronald Doe and it says, now, who's that knocking on my, on my brain? I hope it's not you, Mr. Cocaine, because Mr. Cocaine, you and I are through, and so is the fake fun that I had with you. Now, Mr. Cocaine, how could you dare even have the nerve to come around here? Because of you, I lost my wife and kids, and I'll never forgive you for what you did. For you made me a lie, cheat, swindle, and steal, and you convinced me it was no big deal to lie to my sister and rip off my, my brother and even steal from my own sweet mother. You brought me to places I didn't want to be. You made me see things I didn't want to see. You made me do things I didn't want to do, like leaving my kids just to hang out with you. You promised you'd be there, but you left me alone. You didn't even answer when I called on the phone. You promised me riches, but you then left me poor. And these are the reasons I don't want you anymore. So goodbye, Mr. Cocaine, and goodbye, pain. Goodbye to the days of acting insane. Goodbye to the nights we spend together. Goodbye, Mr. Cocaine, and goodbye forever. So as you can see, therapy, as you can see, poetry is really helpful as it allows deep messages to be conveyed without actually having to share one's feelings. Because let's be honest, sometimes it's hard to open up and share how, how we really feel. You know, like it's easy to tell somebody, well, go, go and tell your friend or go and tell so-and-so how you feel. But sometimes it's easier said than done, right? So nonetheless, in the next slide, we do have Juan, who will be discussing photography as another alternative. Go ahead, Juan. Thank you, Claudia, and thank you for sharing that poem. It kind of reminds me of the... Uh, uh, poetry that our we had we used to work with clients in a residential setting, um, young clients from twelve to seventeen, and they they always were able to uh, sometimes not express themselves openly, you know, in a conversation, but with a uh, with paper and pencil, they've always come up with um, the most artistic and powerful words that I mean you could ever read uh, with live imagery. So thank you. So changing a little bit on the artistic side. So photography, um, 
to do photography, I learned, um, I did shoot a little bit professionally, that you don't need the most expensive equipment, to be honest. Um, especially with today's powerful tools that we have available, your phone is actually one of the most advanced computers multitasking, like a Swiss army knife of um, technology. You have uh, a generation of information there and you have a camera that captures really powerful images, really crisp and clear. So when it comes to equipment, um, you don't actually need to buy, you know, the top of the line Nikon or Canon or Sony camera. You can use your phone, a simple iPhone 11 Pro, uh, iPhone 10. I mean, even like the older iPhones, iPhone 6, 7, it doesn't matter. They always have really good camera and uh, image quality. So capturing your surroundings is one to start off with. Um, getting a, a feel for um, what your style is. Uh, maybe capturing a sunset that you feel that capture that day and putting it together in a visual diary, um, a simple notepad or a simple word document. You could start um, your diary. You could just put paste your pictures and images there and start um, a caption for that picture. Hey, you know, this sunset brings all my feelings today. It was a hard day at work or it was a tough day at home just being uh you know, it's still in the home environment for some of us and, you know, for some of uh, individuals are actually working in the field. So that's one way you could start. Um, you can also do like, a, like kind of like a video log and uh, just a sim like I said, phones have um, the power to shoot video, very high quality, crisp uh, and clear video. And you could start maybe just a video of your work, you can start with your drive, you know, I mean, don't, don't drive and, and use the phone at the same time. You could probably put it like in a little standard and just start recording, but something like that, something that you could relate to an image, a simple 10 second uh, video image that can hold what you feel like that day. Um, if you feel like traffic is the tribulation of your day, you know, capture a picture of traffic or a video. Or, you know, if you like how the building of your work looks like and maybe describe it in three, four sentences and that exercises your grammar, that exercising, uh, you know, you're just, it's a moment to yourself that you're able to uh, express yourself through imagery, through the image that you shoot and through the words. So it, it's a, you kind of take care of two things right there. Also, if you want to, some equipment that you can use to maybe improve on your images a selfie stick um, just for image stabilization uh, makes the images a little bit more clear um, if you want to actually start sharing you know if you feel comfortable first of all with sharing a digital platform instagram is a perfect plat platform where you can share your images uh with uh anybody using hashtags you can make friends there you can add your friends that you trust for example if you have a circle of friends um, maybe most of them are on Instagram and if they're not, maybe you could, you know, uh, start your own click there, you know, coworkers from work or something like that. And then, you know, you guys start sharing your images there. You start sharing your, the videos and, you know, just expressing yourself through that medium, just like Claudia was expressing herself, you know, through painting, uh, expressing yourself is, through photography is, is actually an artistic medium too. So that's another way. Um, there's other platforms that you could use like Facebook. Um, there's also some other ones that are probably, you know, fairly new, like, uh, um, I don't know about TikTok. TikTok is a uh, whole political issue, but that's another, that's another topic for another day. Um, if you want to enhance your photography or video, there's drones, there's other video equipment, there's other equipment if you're trying to enhance. Uh, I'm not saying you have to go and you need this equipment the smartphone is a perfect setup where you could start off from uh, most of them have plenty of memory so moving on i'm going to show you a little bit of my sample work that i've uh, just playing around just on a you know weekend and i find myself in the middle of nowhere and um, this is a simple shot uh here in red rock canyon uh, national park in uh, mojave desert uh, it's a simple uh, photo that just captures the landscape and how I feel the vast emptiness and, you know, it's, it's peaceful to me, uh, even though it, it looks, 
you know, hectic in the background with the clouds and the uh, the canyon there. It's just, to me, it's a simple shot. And then I have found myself uh, playing around with a drone that I purchased. And it's just, um, it's a way to tell a story from a different angle. Uh, I've been just playing around where, you know, at sunset or at sunrise where the shadows are different. And uh, here I have like a little clip. Uh, can you guess the landscape would be the question I would want to ask. If you guys want to guess, put your guess in the uh, chat box and uh, let's see if you're able to guess this landscape from this perspective. So definitely you don't need all this equipment, but as you start growing, maybe with your um, visual diary or your uh, video log, you want to start expanding and a drone video camera, all this is, you know, might be at the start of a hobby, start of a new profession. Um, so definitely uh, is a way, a tool. It's more of a tool to start the progression of a new perspective in the art. Dry vest of land. Yes, it's dry. The desert. Yeah, you got it. That's the desert. It's a desert at sunset and you can see the long shadows. And uh, we had someone that said that looked like uh, Dr. Pimple Popper. What, was that you, Stephen, that said that earlier? It does. It looks like <laughs> one of the YouTube videos that she does. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's an interesting perspective. So as you can see, that's what he saw. And Genelli everyone agrees too. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, you know, based on, based on our perception, anyone could see something different. And that's what I like about drones. Photography, in essence, is able to capture that perception that you see, especially using a, a phone. It's a, it's, a, it's a simple tool that you can capture how you see it and how it makes you feel. So pushing on a little bit more on the intellectual alternatives. So and I want to touch base more on maybe expanding your knowledge. So maybe now that we find ourselves at home a little bit more, theaters are kind of open and but we're for the most part we stay at home we spend some more time playing on netflix than we should but we could use that to our advantage so for example when i watched the movie ford versus ferrari a couple months ago i kind of it, it kind of woke up that side of me that was into engineering and to motorcycles and cars so it kind of made me go back uh refresh myself on new engines and new projects that i just started you know i picked up on and, you know, it made me immerse myself in that world again. So a simple movie like that can awaken maybe a topic. Maybe you saw a historical uh, documentary on the Winchester home up in San Jose. And you're like, well, people say this house is haunted, but why? What's the background about it? You know, the documentary will only give you so much that they could squeeze in in the 20, 25 minutes. Maybe you want to know a little bit more about history. Or maybe you saw Saving Private Ryan, which is a, a, an awesome World War II movie, and you want to know more about this uh, historical time point, historical event of World War II, and what, why were you know the Allies fighting the Axis powers? How did that start? Maybe find the root of it. And immersing yourself in historical time points are excellent uh, points in time that you can learn about, and it's knowledge. It's powerful knowledge, definitely. So. We're going to immerse ourselves more on the physical and hiking and working out. That's also an alternative. Go ahead, Julian. Uh, thanks, Juan. I really hope my skin doesn't look like a desert. Um, <laughs> anyway. Um, so I wanted to mention a little bit about like what kind of physical activities that you guys could do. Um, so I just wanted to mention that exercise is not just about aerobic capacity and muscle size. Exercise has a massive impact on your overall physical health, your actual physique, it can trim your waistline, and maybe most importantly, it can add years to your life. People who exercise regularly, they tend to do so because it gives them an enormous sense of well-being. They feel more energetic throughout the day, they sleep better at night, they have sharper memories, and they feel more relaxed and positive about themselves and their lives. And it's also powerful medicine for many common mental health challenges. Um, regular exercise can have a profoundly positive impact on things like depression, anxiety, ADHD, and more. 
It also relieves stress, improves memory, and helps you sleep better and boosts your overall mood. Um, the way that it does this is that when you're actually exercising, when you're doing some kind of physical activity, uh, I, I think after about 30 or so seconds, of aerobic activity, your brain will actually create and release endorphins. And that's a signal that gets into your brain that says, hey, you're doing something good, keep it up, you feel good about it. Sometimes for some of us, if we struggle with physical activity like that, um, it helps to try smaller intervals or even things that are a little bit easier at first and, and things like that. Uh, Juan, you could go over to the next page. Um, so the research has shown that exercise is an effective but often underused treatment for mild to moderate depression. In addition to exercise, in addition to exercise outside with an appropriate amount of sun protection, it can help boost, boost levels of vitamin D and your mood. Um, vitamin D, if you guys, if you guys haven't, um, if you guys haven't heard, it's actually super important for your immune system. Vitamin D is also one of the only vitamins that is um, a hormone as well. It's actually a building block for things like testosterone and estrogen that we need in our bodies to keep us healthy, both um, mentally and physically. And because, social, because strong social support is important for those of us with depression, joining a group exercise class may be beneficial. It may be really hard at first, you might be a little shy, but overall you'll get massive benefits if you actually are able to do that. And if you can't do that, you can just exercise with a close friend or your partner, maybe in your backyard, maybe in your apartment or something like that. Um, in doing so, you'll benefit from the physical activity and also the emotional comfort of knowing that other people are supporting you. One of the things that uh, me and my brother started doing is that um, I, I put up the boxing picture because I like to box a little bit. And one of the things that we're doing is that he's, it's called holding mitts. Um, so it, it's pretty much he holds the boxing mitts and then it's like one, two, one, two, one, two. And then we do that. Um, it, it's, it's really great. We're outside, we're in the backyard, we're getting air, we're, we're having fun, we're talking. I, it, it's, it's really amazing um, the feeling after you work out, like uh, after you work out, after you shower, and then maybe you like sit down on the couch and then you can breathe that sigh of relief, like ah, I'm done, I did it, I did it for the day. Um, uh, I always think to myself, if there was a way to put that feeling in like a pill, you would sell that in like be a millionaire because there's there's nothing that compares to that feeling. The feeling of like, I did it, I'm done. I, I hit my goal for the day. It's, it's really amazing how you feel after you work out. Um, Juan, you can go over to the next slide if you want. Um, so we also get the question uh, specifically for some of our clients, if there are actually any exercises that are better for treating depression. And it actually appears that any form of exercise can help to, with depression. Uh, some examples of light, like more moderate exercises that you can do include biking, uh, dancing, gardening. Gardening is really peaceful. Um, golf, but make sure that you walk. You're not just taking the cart. Also mini golf, if you don't want to actually go golf is a great alternative. It's relatively cheap. Um, I'm not 100% sure if, they're, if the mini golf places are open, but if they're not, you could set something up even in your house. Like you could buy a mini golf set and then set something up. Maybe the first course is in your kitchen. The second course is in the living room. Then, then the last course is like in the bedroom or something like that. I don't know. The, but just small things like that that are both creative and physical and, and fun. Um, housework is also a, a really great form of exercise, especially sweeping, mopping, and vacuuming in particular. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, jogging at a, at a moderate pace for about five, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Uh, low impact aerobics, um, like swimming or like walking. Um, playing tennis is also really great for you. It's a great aerobic activity. Yard work, especially mowing or raking and yoga. 
So um, I wanted to briefly mention that yard work, like mowing, raking, and housework, like sweeping, mopping, and vacuuming, are really important. Not not just for like cleanliness and all that stuff, but because when you're sweeping, you can see that the floor that the floor is cleaner. When you're done mopping, you can see that everything is is much cleaner. If you're mowing the yard, you can see when that when you're done mowing. Um, a lot of the things that we've been talking about, like painting, like photography, like writing, all of those things are really important. And what's also important is being able to take a second, recognize and, and be able to like notice your own progress and then think like, oh, wow, I did that. I, I, I mowed the whole lawn. I raked the whole yard. I, I was able to, to walk a whole block. I was able to run five miles. A lot of the time we don't take um, we don't take a second to sort of like congratulate ourselves. Sometimes we're we're a little bit hard on ourselves, and sometimes it's helpful to um, combine several of these different activities. Like if you wanted to combine um, sort of a creative writing with like a workout, so you write down exactly what you're doing, what you're working out. And then maybe the creative part could be you write down how it made you feel. Oh, I was super tired. Oh, this is way easier. I love this. I don't like this and things like that. Try to combine different activities and, and so that you'll get an overall larger impact um, on, your, on your mood. Um, but yeah, with that being said, we're going to talk a little bit about um, family group activities and um, things that we can do together as a family or as a group. And then Juan, you can go over to the next slide. Awesome, thank you, Julian. So familial group activities, right? These are activities that we can do with our families, friends, um, people you consider your family. Uh, so for me, this is a personal one, it's TV time. Uh, so definitely, uh, most of the time when I do go to my friend's house, uh, friends who I consider brothers um, or sisters, it's TV time, right? It's with our kids. We all, for the most part, all of us have kids. So we are all conscious of what we're watching. So it, it, it does help out because you're spending time together with your family. It's strengthening uh, your uh, family's connection, and then you have fun as a family. Um, some of these, some of the things that we watch, um, definitely like shows that are are educational, right, for kids. Or oh, we watch a lot of Animal Planet, National Geographic. My kids love food. You know, they love homemade food. So we also watch cooking shows, uh, challenges, right. Uh, different things like that, even on YouTube, sometimes, um, you know, with technology, now you have the the mirroring or the, you can search up YouTube on your TV. Um, and we'll watch, you know, the, the strangest things like sushi from, you know, imported from China or imported, you know, fresh sushi, thing, you know, just the randomest things. But it's all like educational stuff. It's time that we spend together. We kind of bond. Uh, we kind of do our, our our own thing together. So definitely want to encourage you guys, TV time, uh, making sure you guys are watching things that are, you know, appropriate, you're conscious to who you're with. Um, I definitely don't like to watch things, you know, that are obviously rated R or things like that with my kids um, because it, it there are, it, it's rated R for a reason, you know, and, um, Definitely encourage you guys. Uh, TV time is one of the easiest ways uh, to spend time uh, with your family. So you can go off to the next slide, and I believe Claudia will be talking about cooking. Thank you, Stephen. So that brings us, us to cooking. So sometimes we don't have the cable, we don't have YouTube, we don't, we probably don't even have Wi-Fi. But what can we do? I mean, most of the times we have a pan and something to cook on right but another familiar or group activity that is helpful when combating substance use is cooking because let's be honest food brings people together 
whether it's family or friends. Cooking helps with making people feel good about themselves and it provides a sense of immediate gratification. It also functions as a, as a method for stressed out users to focus on a task at hand and helps them feel satisfied once they have completed the task. For example, in the chat box, I want you guys to either answer yes or no. When you guys cook a good meal and you have somebody, whether it's friends or family and you feed it to them, isn't that a good feeling? Like, do you guys enjoy that feeling when people are like, wow, this is good? Yeah, I'm saying yes. You know, for me, it's a great feeling. It really does encourage me. And then you probably might even try to be a little creative. You might want to put the rice in, a, in like a perfect little round position. Whatever the case is, cooking is really helpful. And, I've, and I found it to be very helpful for me and as well as a previous substance abuse counselor. I know that I would spend a lot of the time in the kitchen with the kids and we would talk about cooking. Sometimes we would go down there and um, we would help with cooking. And it was just fun. It felt so great just to put spices together to make one dish. So if you guys look at the video, that's there's two playing. So these are both meals made by me. The first one is just my family enjoying uh, aguachiles. If you guys don't aren't familiar with that, I totally recommend it, maybe at a later time. Um, but as you can see, food brings family together, and that's really the point that we want to stress out today. Um, you know, whether you have the canvas to paint on, whether you have the, t the TV or, or the cable or Wi-Fi, or whether you might just have rice and beans and you might just put that together, and that might make something. <laughs> I'm seeing share your recipes. Of course, I will. I should start like a little Phoenix House life cookbook <laughs> or a cook with me. But yeah, we really just wanted to share that cooking does bring people together and, and it makes people feel better. So in the next slide, we will be covering another familial activity. Go ahead, Juan. Oh, um, so actually it's, I'm up, it's Julian. Hi, Hi everyone. Julian. <laughs> um, so one of the things that, that I do together with my family is um, we set up a projector in the backyard. Um, so we when the when the whole lockdown and everything happened um me and my sister actually saved up and we decided to to put all our money from what we would have gone or what we would have spent on the movies um into a projector in the backyard um with the covid-19 going on and most movie theaters being closed some of us are unwill or even some of us just being unwilling to go to movie theaters um we we just set it up and we sort of like distributed the activities so what my sister does is that she'll grab snacks or sometimes bug spray depending on how many mosquitoes there are outside and then we'll all we'll just watch a movie outside um sometimes we watch a baseball game with my with my parents or something like that or we'll watch netflix or we'll rent a movie from amazon it's like 2.99 um but most importantly all of the things that we're doing is we're spending our time together. We're talking about the movie. Sometimes we're like, we pause the movie and we're like, what do you think is gonna happen? Oh, I think, I think this guy is the killer or something like that. Um, and, it, and it's really fun. Um, if you guys can do this, you should definitely try it. Um, and if you can't, just have a regular movie night. Um, you could, if you wanna go out and maybe go to 7-Eleven and buy bags of chips or ice cream or chocolate or something like that and make it like a more movie going experience that would be great um if you guys want to do this inside um maybe set up blankets and and put them on on like the windows so if you don't have like blackout curtains or something like that so that it, it becomes a more like movie going experience i think that um it, it's important to to try these things just to sort of like get away even just from the monotony of of staying at home and having having to be like stuck with everyone and all that stuff um it, it's nice to just set up areas like well the you know what the living room tonight it's not a living room it's a movie theater the backyard tonight it's not a backyard it's a drive-in i feel like just having those experiences really helps to break up a lot of like what we're going through. And it makes um, sort of, it makes everything a, a little bit more positive. 
like yeah we are here but we have each other and um, with that said uh juan you can i think you're up thank you julian so i wanted to uh reiterate a little bit more on the family uh side like julian was talking about uh video and movies i think that projector setup is uh i think it's excellent way to uh create that moment with family but i also on my end i wanted to introduce maybe board games and card games um engaging a conversation about life at the same time card games you could start as simple as an uno game we were talking with uh, steven er uh, earlier i'm like hey if you do like monopoly it's like a never-ending game and so you want to start me with a card game an online interactive game if you want to use technology but sometimes you want to put technology to rest and when you set this up, and it doesn't have to be a weekend, it could be a weekday, it sets up a tradition. And this tradition can be, you know, significant because then it's expected. The kids might want to actually set up the table now every Wednesday night, you know, if you introduce it on a Wednesday night and keep this tradition going with Uno. Uh, Steven was talking about a game called the Aggression, uh, Monopoly. And all these classic, Oh, aggravation. My bad. Aggression. Yes, that aggravation. might be a new one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so definitely a simple way to start a family tradition that can quickly take off. So just to keep in mind. And so go ahead, uh, Stephen, uh, with the Phoenix House Services. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So uh, with that, you know, we're, we're coming towards the end of our presentation. We just want to let you guys know. Um, about our Phoenix House services. So we do have an outpatient substance abuse treatment program. Um, if you guys know anyone that's struggling with substance abuse, we are providing services to um, adolescents and adults now. Um, so definitely we can connect you with Lolita Otley. She is the coordinator for that program. Uh, we also have an outpatient mental health program. That program does work with adolescents and young adults. Um, so definitely we can connect you with Jenny Sanchez. She's a coordinator for that program. Um, any mental health, you know, issues, questions, things like that, we can definitely connect you with her. Um, we also have a wraparound program, you know, definitely uh, it's a team, you know, geared towards combating any behavioral issues with adolescents. Um, this one, you do need a referral from a probation officer or your county social worker. Um, and then MAT services, if you guys know anyone that's struggling with opioid addiction and, you know, they're, they're looking for MAT services, you can definitely give us a call. We can connect you with an agency that's closest to um, where the individual is. That way it's convenient for them to go and uh, receive these services. Um, and, and the next slide, it's our contact information. It'll come up in a second. There it is. Um, so guys, we're always willing to present, collaborate, um, you know, we're, we're on a mission to combat, you know, all of these uh, substance use issues, uh, mental health disorders, uh, things like that. So um, definitely we're always willing, able to, uh, and are ready to present anywhere. Um, if you guys would like that, you can definitely contact us. Or if you just have a question, you can definitely contact us. Our uh, phone numbers, our emails are on here. Uh, we have Sarah Green, who's our program coordinator. And then you have uh, Morgan Wallace, our clinical trainer. And then you have the, the prevention team, Juan Jimenez, Claudia Buenrostro, Julian Olmos, and myself, Stephen Flamenco. Um, we make up the prevention team at Phoenix House. And then lastly, we have our, to the left and the right, we have our uh, Facebook and our Instagram QR codes. If you guys don't follow us yet, uh, please give us a follow. You know, we're always posting resources, things that are, um, our partner agencies are doing, um, agencies that we collaborate with. Um, so it's a good resource to have, especially, you know, if you work um, as a provider. Um, it's, it's always useful to be able to say, hey, you know what, I heard of a food pantry this weekend, you know, that uh, Phoenix House reposted. Um, I've heard of, uh, I heard of the back to school event that, that they're doing, you know, that Phoenix House reposted, you know, and we do the same with our partner agencies too, when they post things, you know, so definitely give us a follow that way, you know, we can all help each other out. Um, with that being said, I think we're going to stop the recording and it'll open it up if anyone has any questions, um, anything.